Okay, so very quick uh, video. Here's the 4D systems display. Finally, getting the rev counter running. Um, you can see everything else is running as well. Um, try and get the uh, figures. The uh, the inputs have stopped dancing around on the screen. There we go. Okay, so when I left off, I was unable. When we left off, I was unable to get or was was needing to purchase a license to get the 4D systems rev counter working. Um, I did that and 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 had some success getting um, the display to sort of look how I wanted but it was quite clear from the very beginning that performance just wasn't there um, there, there are a number of reasons as to why but ultimately after a little bit of faffing and um, a lot of help from the 4D system staff I was able to come to um, I'll, I'll get a solution to the to the rev counter problem so you can see it now being displayed on the on the screen um, I have a pot now attached to the second Arduino, which I can just just um, just adjust to get the rev counter to to increase and decrease. And again, we've got our LEDs on there, uh, shift lights now up to 16 LEDs. Um, I've also introduced paging onto the 4D systems display. So if I press the um, the momentary button, we can get the second page. And um, back again or take us to the to the first page. I think for the time being I'm going to limit that to four. There aren't necessarily any pages in the um, software at all. I just change the labels and change the um, the values which are being displayed on the screen. So ultimately we could probably have unlimited paging as long as you have the values coming from the ECU. Um, I've done quite a lot of work on the code now so that as, to, as things progress I can actually change values and warnings from a third party so I'm thinking probably stick a Wi-Fi board on there um, and then just have a little web server on it so that I can log on through a web browser on my phone for example and, um, and change the values there or change what I want to display on each theoretical page um, but that's again that's a little bit further on but but the, but the backgrounds of it, it, it is there essentially um, it's all value based now rather than hard coded um, I'm sorry collections of values rather than a hard coded data to screen so to speak um, so part of the work that I did included um, minimum and maximum warnings so if we take um, all 10 for example I have a minimum warning of 10 so 10 degrees I also have a maximum warning of 120 Um, I, um, I've i played with the idea of bringing the warning to, to your attention so if we're on then page 2 for example and then adjust um, adjust the value so we've now got a warning of oil temperature at 7 degrees that's taken us back to the oil temp page um, for us to see the actual what what the problem is um, and, and that's it. It's, it's quite simple, actually. Essentially, um, took a little bit of figuring out, but uh, yeah, got there in the end. So, next steps really. <laughs> you, can, you can just see out of frame the massive wire and massive wires on the on the little prototype board. That needs to change. I can't put that in the car at all. That has to be um, a circuit board. So I'm gonna to have to go away and learn how to um, learn how to do that. It'll just be essentially a, a number of um, holders and then circuits for the little boards that I'm using. Um, I'm not going to go as far as as creating my own um, circuit board from scratch at this level. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, and then from there, I just need to look at working how how I'm going to um, fix it in the car. I think for the time being it'll just be panel mounted where the, where the MOE gauges once were um, and that'll do, that'll do for proof of concept, that'll do for, for testing and from there we'll probably 3D print an enclosure or something I have some experience with 3D printing so so I'm not too worried about that um, but I keep saying this but this is this really is 
where I'm going to, I think I'll stop. <laughs> There's only so much tweaking I can do until it just needs to go in the car and be tested properly. So I need to spend time now getting the car up to date and running. Um, a couple of weekends ago I stripped all the wiring out so the the car is, is empty. There's no wiring in it at all. I actually have a box just behind me which is uh, full of its wiring engine and um, and chassis. So I need to, I need, I really need to get on with that. That's my ideas and um, and again I'm going to make a few things for that as well. So that should be fun. All part of the process. But uh, this is it for now. Um, again, we'll we'll get to the uh, to the management of the thing through web browser sooner or later. For the time being, I can just quickly attach my laptop to it and uh, and, and change the values. Ultimately, I want to be able to do that with a smartphone. So you're at a racetrack. You don't want to take a laptop with you. You, but you need to change a warning, you, or you want to add a warning, or add some more data onto the display. Or you can just do that through your smartphone, um, connect to the thing through a wireless network, and and change its settings through there. And that's the, that's that's the dream anyway. Um, I don't think that's too difficult to achieve. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I'm a I'm a mobile app developer, um, so. To me, that's easy. This is really difficult, <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm managing this, so I'm, I, I have every confidence in myself, so to speak, without wanting to sound a bit cocky. But uh, anyway, yeah, I uh, hope you like what you see. I'll um, I'll be along with some more updates soon, hopefully. Cheers.